It really is Rick's legacy because uh, as a bus driver, he used to run the route from downtown out to the Vic General Hospital. Back in the spring of 1986, he had a six-year-old girl and uh, her single-parent mom would ride almost every day with him out to the hospital so she could get treatment. Rick got to know her name. Her name was Bernadette. And he also found out that she had a rather rare disease called neiman Picks disease. This is Bernadette right here and her mom. I remember lots of times being on the bus with him and everyone wanted to talk to him. Even walking down the street, he would get stopped and people just want to talk to him. He had that kind of face, that just an invited conversation, I think. So one day he asked her, he said, Bernadette, if you could do anything you wanted, what would it be? And she said, oh my gosh, she said, I would love to go to Nova Scotia to meet my grandmother. I've never met her personally. So Rick went home that night and uh, talked to his partner about taking money out of his bank account to send them to Nova Scotia. And so his partner said, well, you know, if you really want to do this, why don't you set up a charity? Because there's no charity here that does that. I can only imagine that he got sense of a great sense of satisfaction from it and thought, well, if I could do that for this little girl, what else can I do for other people, other kids? So they applied for the license and surprisingly, within six weeks, they had their charity license, started raising money, and the first, the first dream was Bernadette's dream. And so Bernadette and her mom flew to Nova Scotia for three weeks visit with her grandmother. That's the long and short of how Helpful Dream got started. I came on board in September that year, so I'm not sure that we really knew what we were getting into. In the early years, it was a struggle to, to, to have enough uh, money coming in from fundraising to keep ahead of the dreams, but nevertheless, uh, it was uh, very rewarding. In 1989, my dad passed away April 23rd, the day before my brother turned 19, which was heartbreaking. The uh, official report was ruled as a heart attack and Help Fill a Dream, I think, took, took a bit of a hit. But I think that ultimately the people who were involved at the beginning realized the potential of the dreams and kept it going. It was sad. Um, he was gone an instant. Because then at that point you say, well, is the organization going to survive? Yes, it was. The board was convinced that we were on the track even more so for something great. And so we wanted to keep Rick's memory alive and uh, the idea of this organization alive. 